The sudden death of Justice Antonin Scalia has left a hole, not just in his weird medieval hunting club or on the Supreme Court softball team, but at the court itself, which will now have to dive up your uterus without him. The Supreme Court next week considers striking down the Texas law that has forced all but 10 abortion clinics to, to shut down in the state. Justice Scalia's death leaves just eight justices and the possibility of tie votes four to four. Don't schedule your cervical cancer yet, Texans. A tie is not good news. A tie would mean the tough new Texas restrictions on abortion would remain, possibly inspiring other states to enact similar laws. If there's a tie, it's as if the Supreme Court never heard the case. Well, that should be easy. Pretending the Supreme Court never ruled on abortion has been Texas's attitude ever since Roe v. Wade. <laughs> but how restrictive are their new regulations? I flew people in from Texas to find out. Ever since Roe v. Wade legalized abortion, anti-choice activists have been working to undermine it. I spoke with Elise Hoag, president of NARAL, to learn about one of the latest assaults to women's reproductive rights, Texas Law HB 2. The ultimate goal of HB 2 is to close clinics down and end legal abortion by burdening them with medically unnecessary regulations about how wide the hallways are, how big the janitor closets are, um, really impossible to meet regulations. In fact, there are 90 pages of prohibitively expensive renovations that clinics have to adopt to qualify as surgical centers. What cunning practitioner of legislative sorcery did this? My name is Dan Flynn. I was one of the uh, joint authors of HB2. Oh, this uterus expert. The issue for this bill mm -hmm. was to be sure that we provided health care, safe health care for women. How does removing access to health care increase health care? We're not removing access to health care. We're improving. So the intention of the law was not to do away with abortions. No. It was just to make them impossible <laughs> to acquire. You know better than that. Do what do you mean I? impossible? I mean, okay, what? Anytime you start cutting on people's body, you need to have it in a procedure where it can be healthy. Of course. You don't cut a woman in an abortion, though. To be fair, we grew up in ancient Westeros, where they did abortions the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I don't know, but I, I've listened to many doctors tell me about the procedures that happen when you do an invasive surgery. You don't seem to know anything specifically about abortion, really, at all. And yet, you did all this with building regulations. What? You gotta feel that. We do. But you know what? I don't see any reason to go rub anything in anybody's face. You don't need to gloat. No. You've done enough. There's those other 8,000 bills I gotta go deal with. You've too. done enough. <laughs> but he had help from AUL, an anti choice group that creates boilerplate bills for lawmakers around the US too lazy to write their own. This is AUL's giant manual of pre written laws. There's over 500 pages in this. Where's yours? We have one now. Does it look like this? It's not quite as thick. Quality trumps quantity. It does not. It really doesn't. Or it would have stopped all 231 anti-choice laws that have been passed around the country since 2010, leaving some women to take matters into their own hands. And we're hearing from doctors that more women are asking them, you know, can, can I throw myself down the stairs? Can I drink bleach? Can I douche with bleach? Yeah. Have you thought about regulating the safety of back alleys? Because that's where a lot of women will be having their abortions I don't believe now. That. You don't? No. What? I just don't. Okay. I don't believe that. They are. I don't. It's true. I just don't think that happens. There certainly are yes. exceptions. Like in the tens believe. of thousands of exceptions. I don't believe that. Where do you get those numbers? Reality. By 2012, vast numbers of women in Texas alone had tried to self-induce an abortion or knew someone who had. And that was before Flynn and his posse came riding through the state, closing 24 clinics. I think the day that we thought that Roe was an end point and not a beginning point for women's empowerment, they started to chip away at our rights. How did the group who fought the notion that women should stick knitting needles up their vaginas seed the language of women's health and safety to the other side. It was a little bit of a sneak attack. Where's your sneak attack? We've got some memes we're thinking about. What are your memes? Um, <laughs> all access. That should work. <laughs> what you do, but you have got to get in it, Hogue. Because your opponent is this big, hungry, 
greedy sharks. We gotta stop them. Well, how are you gonna do that if you're the baby seal? The tasty. Confuse them. Okay. Um, how does the baby seal confuse the giant killer shark who never stops moving? By being faster and quicker and more nimble. That just makes you more attractive to the shark. You've got to be the harpoon that kills the shark. No, sharks are critical, critical cornerstone species for the oceans, but don't want to kill the sharks. I hate the girl so much. Elise needed all the help she could get. I need my ringer, come on in! Ladies and gentlemen, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Shark and the head coach of WNBA's Indiana Fever, Stephanie! Millions of women looking to you for protection. You are protecting women's health. Not some <laughs> damn the Maybe something a little more inspirational? I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. It's not. But it's your right. You gotta defend it. Your defense is your only offense. You're gonna have to step it up. You gotta step it up. Let's bring it in. Shark! Yay! Good luck, Elise, because if the Supreme Court doesn't rule to protect clinics from bullshit legal chicanery soon, you'll be fighting geniuses like this guy forever. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong. Hey, I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong. I think you're the wrongiest. Yeah, I think you're the wrongiest wrongiest. I speak with the authority of one who has a uterus. And I guess that's why I think that you're the wrongiest, wrong-headedest, wrong person. Well, I can tell you some things about a, a man that you wouldn't understand. I need to do a better job of educating you. That's an awesome pep talk. Yeah. Next time I need to regulate men's bodies, I'll be sure to get in touch. We'll be right back.